evening. Good evening. Let me just say, wow. First of all, thank you. Thank you all for being here, 18,000 strong. This is the largest gathering ever in the history of Apex Policy Conference. We've come together from all 50 states as Jews and Christians, African Americans and Hispanic Americans, progressives and conservatives, Democrats and Republicans, and with more than 4,000 pro-Israel student activists. We've come together as individuals with an array of perspectives and diverse backgrounds. Together, we form the fabric of our movement. And it's our common thread, the common purpose we all share, which makes our community so special. At a time when American politics can be divisive, when it's easy to be consumed by rhetoric and opinions that divide us, we are united. <laughs> united in our belief in the U.S.-Israel relationship. United in our commitment to keeping this, this important relationship strong. So tonight, let's talk about where we are at this moment. Let's reaffirm key elements that define our shared purpose. A love for America and Israel. An understanding of the dangers threatening both nations a strong belief in the American political system, a commitment to taking important action, and an awareness of our work's higher purpose. We are united in our love for America and Israel and the remarkable things that can be achieved by working together. Two beacons of freedom, democracy, and human rights in a world full of oppression, tyranny, and persecution. Two peoples who embrace tolerance and inclusion of all races, all religions, and peoples from all walks of life. Two nations improving our world through life-saving medical discoveries, through humanitarian aid and disaster relief, through elite entrepreneurship and world-class innovation. Americans and Israelis are united, not just in how we build our nations, but also how we protect them. That strategic partnership was on vivid display just this month. 1,700 American servicemen traveled to Israel to train with 2,000 of their Israeli counterparts. We value the alliance between the United States and Israel for all that it stands for and all that it does to better our world. And when it comes to the darker realities we face, this relationship is central to keeping Israel safe and America strong. In the Gaza Strip, Hamas has restocked its entire rocket arsenal. Residents in the Israeli city of Sderot lay awake at night worried about rockets raining from above and terrorists emerging from tunnels below. 
In Lebanon, the Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah has more than 150,000 rockets and missiles aimed at Israel. That's eight missiles for every single person sitting here tonight. In Egypt, the Sinai Peninsula is a breeding ground for ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other jihadi groups cooperating and competing to attack Israel and our other allies in the Middle East. In Jordan, the pro-Western monarchy is strained by refugees pouring out of Syria. 1.4 million refugees, 1.4 million refugees, according to the latest estimates. Tonight, Jordan's fourth largest city is a refugee camp. In Syria, the death toll is approaching 500,000, and that number continues to rise. It is as though a city the size of Miami or Atlanta or Kansas City was completely wiped out. ISIS, ISIS continues its conquest across the Middle East. Tens of thousands of fighters who with each passing day are more battle-tested and dangerous. And just yesterday in Turkey, an ISIS suicide bomber detonated himself in an Istanbul shopping center, killing six people, including one Israeli and two dual American-Israeli citizens. Tonight, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of all the victims. And in Israel itself, 33 innocent people have been killed since October. 300 more are wounded, and five American families are mourning the death of loved ones. Hey, Tom Hankin, Richard Lakin, Ezra Schwartz, Tuvia Weissman, and Taylor Force all murdered at the hands of Palestinian terrorists. And fueling all of this chaos, fueling the instability in the region today is Iran. So let us be clear. Iran remains the greatest threat to America's interests in the Middle East and to Israel's ultimate survival. And if anyone doubts Iran's intentions about Israel, look no further than the event that transpired just 11 days ago when Iran illegally test-fired two more ballistic missiles linked to its nuclear program. One of those missiles, powerful enough to reach Israel, had an inscription written on its side, one sentence. In Hebrew letters, Israel Israel must be wiped off the face of the earth. These threats underscore the need for America and Israel to remain vigilant and to confront these challenges together. So how does that happen? And what is our role? It starts with the firm belief that we can strengthen the U.S.-Israel relationship and help keep Israel secure through our role in the American political process. Today, many are asking whether that process still works. Indeed, the American political system is wrought with partisanship with the polarization of a contentious election cycle, and with the uncertainty that comes from dramatic turnover in Congress. And yet, each of us is here because we believe in our democracy. We believe in our First Amendment rights, which allow us to petition our government and in our ability 
to engage directly with those creating policy. Our involvement in the political process remains the best way to advance the U.S.-Israel alliance. And here's how we do it. By building personal relationships with decision makers from both parties in every state and every congressional district and with all candidates for federal office. We do it by educating them on these critical issues and by urging them to take action when the interests of America and Israel are at stake. Through successes and setbacks, we maintain the ability to impact policy by directly reaching those who shape it. Now, there are those who question our bipartisan approach to political advocacy. But unless any one party controls the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, and controls them forever, bipartisanship is the only way to create stable, sustainable policy from one election to the next. And tonight, Tonight, our commitment to that approach is as strong as it has ever been. Where else in today's America can you find a gathering this committed to political advocacy across party lines? Where else in today's America can you find a gathering this determined to foster relations with our country's decision makers? And where else in today's America can you find a gathering this devoted to an issue, not for commercial gains or economic interests, but for a deep commitment to a cause of such profound significance? These, these are the elements of extraordinary citizenship and effective advocacy. So with our pledge to advance the alliance through our political progress comes significant work. That work continues here and Tuesday on Capitol Hill. 18,000 activists 535 congressional offices, one bipartisan voice. And we have a united message to deliver to our decision makers, a message which we believe will advance the U.S.'s relationship in the year ahead. First, the struggle to prevent a nuclear-armed Iran and to deter Iranian aggression in the Middle East is far from over. We were disappointed by the outcome of the vote last September on the Iran nuclear deal. But we have every reason to be proud of our work, to have fought the right fight and to have raised the concerns that continue to this day. And to those of you who stood up and joined us in this important work, we thank you. We thank you. Now, we must continue to move forward to ensure the world's most dangerous regime never acquires the world's most dangerous weapons. Yes, Iran has taken steps to limit its nuclear program in the near term. It has disconnected centrifuges, shipped out enriched uranium, curtailed its plutonium production. Yet it remains on a path to nuclear weapons capability as restrictions are gradually lifted. Its nuclear program is not dismantled. It's been delayed. 
And that's the best case. And that's even if Iran abides by the deal. Iran's continued violations of international agreements, its missile tests, its arming of terrorists, its deployment of Revolutionary Guard around the region, all signal that its regional aggression continues unabated. And now it's fueled by the lifting of economic sanctions and by over $100 billion in newly unfrozen assets. On Tuesday, we will ask Congress to pass legislation that reaffirms America's resolve to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon, to impose consequences for cheating, and to answer regional aggression with a strong response. Next. We must continue to work for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Yes, it might be hard to imagine a peace agreement amid the current chaos, but we cannot and we will not lose sight of that vision of peace. Two states for two peoples, a Jewish state of Israel living in peace and security alongside a demilitarized Palestinian state. On Tuesday, we will remind Congress that our best hope for peace comes through direct negotiations between the parties themselves. and that that peace is undermined when outside parties, such as the United Nations, the International Criminal Court, or any other international body, seeks to impose their own solution. And that's why we are asking Congress <clears throat> to stand firm and to encourage and support direct talks, and if an anti-Israel resolution is brought before the United Nations Security Council. The United States must be clear. We will veto. And our final message. America must reaffirm its support for Israel with the resources needed to defend herself by herself this year and for years to come. Tonight we ask, given the threats facing Israel at this hour, does she have all the resources needed to protect her citizens from the rockets of Hamas and the missiles of Hezbollah? Can she fully finance the programs needed to protect her people from Iranian missiles that could carry nuclear warheads? Is she fully equipped with what's needed to keep families in Sterot safe from terror tunnels? Is she able to protect our shared interests in a volatile region? Israel has answered those questions and determined that she needs more American help. So together, starting on Tuesday, we must do everything in our power to ensure that the answer is yes. Yes, America is here to help. Yes, America will provide additional resources. And yes, America will always stand with our ally, Israel. As we consider the work that lies ahead, it is critical to remember all that's at stake. Sometimes a small event speaks to a larger truth. February 20th, 
2016, just one month ago today. It wasn't a terribly significant news day. It, no new wars broke out. No new b medical breakthroughs were announced. No earthquakes rocked the planet that day. But quietly, one man's life came to an end. One man whose passing should mark that day as significant for everyone assembled here tonight. That day marked the passing of the last surviving prisoner of the Treblinka concentration camp, Sam Willenberg. Sam was no more than 19 years old when he was rounded up and taken to the camp. He was the only one from his rail car who was not sent to the gas chambers. Sam rose up in the Treblinka revolt, one of the few who escaped the camp. He returned home to Warsaw. He joined the resistance. He fought. He stood his ground. He survived. And as a survivor, he often said, I live two lives. One is here, and the other is what happened there. Sam Willenberg couldn't unsee what happened there. But it's what he did see in the years after. What he saw in his second life that is the story not only of his survival, but of a people's survival. The most significant moment in Willenberg's life was not the hell of Treblinka. It was his immigration to the newly reborn state of Israel. For the last 60 year, 66 years, Sam lived as a proud Jew. He raised a family, he worked, he even became a successful sculptor. And he saw something he never could have imagined in the darkness of his youth. He saw a people emerge from thousands of years of powerlessness to the birth of Israel, a nation of faith and freedom, a beacon of hope. So you're asking yourself, why do I share this story with you tonight? Sam Willenberg's passing represents a moment in history that requires all of our attention a moment for which we bear a special responsibility. You see, in a very brief period of time, all of those who survived the Holocaust will pass from this earth. And then with that passage, we will also lose the direct link. No longer will anyone be able to say of the Holocaust, yes, it happened, and it happened to me. We cannot feel the absence of Sam Willenberg the way his family does. But his passing tells us everything about our mission and its meaning. You see, we in this arena, we are the bridge generation. We're the last to know the survivors and the first that will carry their stories to those without memory of the Holocaust. We are the last generation to know Israel's founders, those who fought for the birth of the state of Israel after 2,000 years. And we will be the first to explain their heroism to those that weren't there. We are the last generation to remember the miraculous birth of a democracy. And we are the first that will be tasked with keeping those memories alive. How we handle this moment, how we act as the stewards of memory, that 
is the test of our time. Will we honor that past by working to protect the now strong but still fragile state of Israel? Will we honor the past by working to safeguard a country that stands with America to protect the values we both hold so dear? Tonight, among us are many survivors of the Holocaust. Speak with them. I think you will find that they take nothing for granted, especially not freedom, America, or Israel. They know what is important and what distracts. And you likely not find much patience for partisan squabbling or bickering over particular issues. They know how lucky we are. Let us say to those survivors now, <laughs> let us say to those survivors now, now while we still have the chance, that we will never, not ever, rest in our efforts to keep America strong and Israel safe. That is why we are here. That is our pledge. That is our purpose. And that is our promise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.